You gonna weld, Falco? Yeah. Okay, you you weld. Might be our last day to weld. Might be our last day to weld today, sir. Yeah. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Schofield Welding. We are sitting here and squirt gunning a bunch of stands together, which has been actually pretty fun. Flocko's been running a couple stands, and it's just, it's been a good time. But anyways, guys, I did not know this for a long time, okay? I thought the only way to run a wire gun was to uh, either have like a plug in the wall mount or whatever, but they do make a suitcase, and Miller makes a suitcase that plugs directly into your leads and I'm gonna show you guys how to set that up. So if you stay tuned for just a little bit, we're gonna show you how to set up the machine and why it's doing what it's doing, all right? So everybody stay tuned, be blessed, we love you. Hope everybody's being safe during the old virus. And uh, hey, it's gonna be over here shortly and we're all gonna go back to making money, so don't worry about it, all right? So, be back in just a sec. Okay, you guys, so what, if you guys followed us on the last video, we did weld off the suitcases. We were doing a bunch of dual shield with Kyle, Taylor Welding. And he was showing us how to run it off a suitcase. Now we used an arc reach suitcase for his, uh, because that's the newest suitcase Miller makes. The thing is freaking phenomenal, especially running it off of a 400 with the arc reach on it. You can run that thing out for as far as you want. And then everything is controlled off the face of the machine. Now I'm gonna show you how to set up the old one and then how to run it off your machine because the old one will run off of any of your machines, okay? The, the new one will run off of any of your machines too, but you just won't have the arc reach ability. You still control wire speed off of the machine, but uh, your volts and everything will be dealt with off of the faceplate or off your remote, all right? We were running a bunch of, we were running a bunch of number one lead. I went and dropped the money on 250 foot of two watt lead. Now. This is not cheap, ultra flex lead. Um, my suggestion is if you get this kind of lead and you're gonna spend the money on this lead, there are two different kinds of ultra flex or flex whip or whatever. There's the orange with the black stripe running down it or the orange, just straight orange. I believe the orange with the black stripe is a better lead. It's a little more flexible and doesn't kink near as bad as this stuff does. I really wish I'd have just spent the money on the black lead because we got a bunch of buddies that have the black lead and they like it, so. Anyways, just a small little deal. But, two out lead, um, to be able to run as far as Kyle's running, which is like 500 to 1,000 feet down inside pipe or whatever, heavier lead is gonna be needed. That's why I bought the heavier lead, was just in case, maybe one day we might go do something like that or whatnot, and gonna need some heavier lead. So, we're running quick connects. We are running the stinger side, so this is my stinger. Uh, I have a whip that's laying on the ground right here. That's gonna be your, your electrode positive. So, stinger is gonna to go to your machine, and then we're gonna hook the ground, which is right here, up to our work piece, okay? Which is just gonna be my rollout wheel. Pretty simple, but I'm gonna bring you out here and show you this machine. Hey right, guys, so we got, the, we got the electrode positive here. This is the stinger side of your whips. Um, only reason I put quick connects in, and I hate running quick connects, but I knew that I wanted to run some wire. You can always go cut your, you know, short pieces, 50 footers or 100 footers or whatever. Have a separate set of leads, which is just a pain in the butt because you got to carry them around and hook them in or whatnot. So I opted for quick connects. I have had no trouble with them as of yet. Right here we have the suitcase, uh, the Extreme 12 VS. Now, guys, this has been a great machine. You can buy these used. I don't know that you can buy them new, okay? And I'm gonna show you how to hook up the arc reach here in a bit. You hook up the arc reach the same exact way. The only difference is, is I'm gonna do a different video on the arc reach and I'm gonna show you the advantages of that machine because that thing is freaking phenomenal, it's great. And that's what we were playing with in the dual shield. But, it's gonna come with a quick connect. It's super simple, hook it up. And, you are connected. Now, in order to make the circuit, because electricity runs through a circuit, okay? Right now, we're broke in the circuit. It's not gonna do anything. The thing about wire feed is there is a wire sensor. Now, you gotta be able to control the wire speed on this thing. This is all explained to me by Kyle. Thank goodness for him. But uh, in this 
In this box, there's going to be a, basically another ground is what it's going to be. This is your wire sensor. This is what's going to complete the circuit, all right? This is what turns the machine on. This is what gives you power. So we've come from the positive. Now we're going to hook this up, and it's going to run up through the, the ground, and it's going to turn the machine on, and everything's going to be making a circuit, all right? It's going to keep the machine on, basically. So... The only way that your stinger arcs off is if you make a complete circuit. So as, if that thing's not touching anything, then there's no circuit. Your machine's not sensing anything. But once you make that connection, now it's making a circuit through all your leads. Your machine's doing what it needs to be doing. This is what runs this. Okay? I didn't know. I didn't know that. I didn't know how to run all this. But um, we're gonna go ahead, turn the machine on. Yes, it's going to be loud, it's going to be noisy, it's just part of it, it's, you know, welding, congratulations, welcome to it. But, uh, anyways, I'm going to show you guys how to do this, and, uh, and then we'll show you how it turns the machine on and everything, alright? Now this machine is a 400 with the arc reach, that's why I'm going to be able to show you how the arc reach works in another video, so stay tuned for that. All we're going to do, so your ground is hooked up to your piece, got your positive to your machine, this is your wire sensor, okay? So you're just going to hook it up. I'm going to turn you around right there. Can you see that? Yep. Okay, so your power's up here. Machine just kicked up into high idle. My machine says 22 and a half. So on this older machine, the only thing that is run off of the machine is going to be your... Uh, your wire speed. So this is going to be your wire speed. This is going to tell it how fast, how slow to go. We're going to stick on about 230. It's <coughs> been really good that way. Not been having too many issues with it. The only thing that I can say is if, and we've just figured this out too, because I haven't really ran a lot of these. We will be running just fine and everything will be burning in hot, everything will be running good and smooth and then all of a sudden that thing will start to sputter and start kicking wire and start doing some weird stuff. We figured it out that it was a, uh, it was a current situation. We just took the ground, moved it closer to the piece or put it right directly to the piece, fire dried up, runs the way it needs to run. So it was kind of hard running it through the rollout wheel, I guess is the best way to say. Now, if you are running volts, uh, there are switches in here. Can you see those buckles? Yep. Okay, so there's a CV, which is your constant voltage. Thank you to Kyle for telling me that, because I had no idea. And then there's your CC. So if you're running a machine that you can run voltage on, click it to constant voltage, and that's going to be just your voltage, all right? What he told me is if you want to run this off of like a Lincoln 300 or Lincoln, you know, something like that, where it has gears, you need to switch it to CC. So, just an idea for you guys there. Now that we've got the machine hooked up, we got our wire sensors on, we got our grounds on. Now, like I said, we were having a little bit of a current problem. And I believe it was because we were running the ground through the chuck into the work piece. Wasn't giving us any trouble until just recently. And then all we had to do is just take that ground, we hooked it right to our work piece, runs great. We don't have any trouble with it. So. Just something to keep in mind is if that's having a little bit of trouble, just uh, get your ground a little bit closer. The other thing we were having a little bit of trouble with was so much uh, voltage drop because I was running such small lead. I was running number one lead. I've always ran number one lead. And it's not a problem when you're running downhill or uphill or whatever, you know. But it seems like when we switched over to voltage, man, we had a lot of voltage drop. And so I went to this lead, and we've been doing really well. Now, the Miller engineers, Cody... And uh, Jake and all those guys, they told me, they're like, man, we, we really would like you to run 2 watt lead. Because in their recommendations, that's what they recommend. So I got it. Stuff is freaking heavy. Don't get me wrong, okay? My poor helper, Flacco, he knows. All right, he knows. He knows. But anyways, guys, so we're going to come over here. We got our Argon, or uh, we got a 7525 bottle, which, running hard wire, which is what we're doing right now. We're running 035 hard wire. We got our bottle. I run a 100 foot push hose just because this is uh, this is basically my TIG setup, okay? So 100 foot hose, I'll get more if it if it calls for it. Purge hose is pretty cheap, it's not that much. Flow meter, 
Um, I would rather have a regulator, to be honest with you, a full-on gauge. Um, I have one. I need to find that thing, but uh, I think it does a better job than a flow meter. But all you do is just run it into that. It's got a port in the back. If you guys remember watching the other video, Kyle actually had uh, air quick connects, air hose quick connects. Makes it super easy. Click it off. Done deal. You don't have to pull out the crescent wrenches. You're ready to rock and roll. So, guys, that's basically it. That is how you're going to hook up this machine, all right? They're super handy. They're heavy when it's got a full spool in it. But I don't think you're going to be able to weld any faster than this thing can weld, all right? Especially with Kyle settings. I think he was on like 28 and 500 on the wire speed, all right? I mean, the thing's just cooking. It's screaming. He can haul butt all the way through it. But we're gonna glue these up, make them all look real good and stuff, and then go from there. But guys, hopefully that helped you. Don't be scared of a suitcase, all right? Your guys' machines will run a suitcase. I don't know about a 200. Um, I don't think a 200 will, but it might. I don't know. You might have to have inverters and things like that. But uh, a 300, I'm pretty dang sure, will run off of this. And I know the Pipe Pros and the Pros and all that will run a suitcase, all right? So, okay, you guys, so we got Flocko's over here uh, getting ready to weld on this deal. We're running 035 wire, a 7525, and then uh, 22 and a half on the machine, and about 230 wire speed so like I said we moved the ground up so that it's a better connection on this whole deal this is your wire sensor which keeps your machine on and it senses the wire speed 